Port congestion and supply chain issues have impacted everyone. The Federal Maritime Commission was established to regulate the International Ocean Transportation System. Max Vekic is the new commissioner for the Federal Maritime Commission. He's among five commissioners who the president appoints to lead the independent federal agency. Max, welcome to the program. Great to be here. So what does the Federal Maritime Commission do? The Federal Maritime Commission is made up of uh, five commissioners and they have oversight, or we have oversight over the ocean shipping carrier industry, primarily uh, it's mostly the international uh, ship companies, uh, maritime companies. Um, we call them carriers. Uh, a lot of people refer to them as shippers. Shippers are actually the people who put stuff into the containers and take it out of the containers. The carriers are the people that carry the product. We, uh, the FMC, the Federal Maritime Commission, we are the advocates for the supply chain in total, and we have a role there, and we speak to the strengths and weaknesses, as in um, you know the lack of adequate infrastructure in our country, which we've taken a great turn towards fixing with this congressional infrastructure bill. So we take care of that. Wanna, I do want to ask you about supply chain because that's uh, clearly a very big issue. But I want to ask you about your enforcement authorities. What kind of authorities do you have for enforcement? Uh, we have injunctive power and we have a bank of attorneys and um, um, professional uh, on staff uh, uh, attorneys with the FMC. We have enforcement people to ensure that the market remains uh, equal playing field uh, prevents monopolistic behavior, prevents collusion, prevents um, unfair unfair uh, marketing. Really, we're really here uh, watchdogs of the marketplace itself. But how does how does the commission specifically help U.S. exporters? Well, not enough. But we need some help from Congress on that part. Uh, and that was one of the things that compelled me to seek this job for President Biden was the idea that we needed to do more for American exporters. Um, my background, uh, I'm a little bit of a, an anachronism. Uh, I've been more involved with exports than most people in my industry over the years. And I've exported wood products and containers and uh, bulk, uh, bulk grains and, and actually even automobiles to China. So I'm a very much a pro export person. Um, we have taken on a new um, export um, expert in um, in the agency. They're they're relatively new, and it's uh, going to be a more a higher profile uh, uh, spot than in the past, and uh, a more of an emphasis on exports. But frankly, uh, I think a little congressional help there with uh, letting us and letting the FMC do more with exports would be a good thing. Max, part of the commission's mission is to, quote, protect the public from unfair and deceptive practices. Can you briefly tell me what kind of unfair and deceptive practices we're talking about? <clears throat> I suspect um, that um, the public would like us to deal with prices. The commission doesn't really have that power to get involved with pricing, but where companies um, collude, and uh, or where uh, uh, there's, there's an effort to have uh, monopolistic behavior to the detriment of um, the American public, which includes the shippers, then the commission has a role to get involved and to take them to court, basically. And um, we recently have been also, um, the uh, Biden administration has uh, uh, offered the use of the Department of J uh, Justice to help with us uh, our enforcement arm and uh, to beef up our, our efforts to make sure the market remains level. And, um, you know, capitalistic uh, systems tend to have the big, uh, the big eat the small too much. And uh, the commission's meant to not let that happen and to keep that from, from us becoming cannibalistic. And um, that's, that's the goal. I, I know that this is a big issue, um, which is the supply chain bottlenecks. From your perspective, can you give us just an idea of what's causing that problem? Well, uh, we can blame it on, on a lot of, there's a lot of villains in this story and there's a lot of causes, but I'd say deferred maintenance 
deferred use of and uh, development of our infrastructure. Infrastructure are the primary reasons why we have this issue uh, today, but uh, consumer demands, great. I mean, we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't be upset because people are spending money and have money to spend. That's a great thing. And um, I'm a, I was a Democrat appointed to this position and in my past I was a state legislator and I was always a person who's interested in jobs. And, uh, and so uh, the economy is robust, that's great, but our infrastructure is not set up to handle this. And um, we could have we could have done this if we'd started um, ten or fifteen years ago to build more docks, to build more uh, terminals, to build more rail capacity. Um, so, but we didn't do that. So now we're playing catch up. That that's the 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 key issue here is is the condition of the ports. The ports are actually getting the cargo moving. You know that's the untold story. We're more more cargo is being moved by the ports. Than ever in the history of our country, and um, but there's still congestion, Max. Why is that? Why is that happening? Why are well, there ships uh, idling outside of the ports? The the problem starts, unfortunately, starts way inland. Uh, there's no warehouses capacity. There are not enough truck drivers to get it there, and there's not enough rail capacity, and there's not enough rail cars, and they're in there sometimes in the wrong spot, and in on the Pacific, where I'm a Pacific Ocean guy. And I'm the only one on the commission from the Pacific Rim. Um, <clears throat> the, the preference for uh, cargo is movement through LA Long Beach, which are the biggest, are, are the number one and two ports in the country. But uh, you know, you can only put so much, only so much cargo through a port without having problems. But um, they're making progress there. The uh, amount of vessels that are waiting is, uh, uh, they're spending less time waiting than the getting to the dock now. So we are making progress. It is it is happening. It's gonna take a while, but this problem didn't just happen and it's gonna take a while to work its way through. And uh, up until two months, up until two months ago, I was actively involved with that, moving cargo and making sure we, uh, we did the best. And, and I can tell you that the workforce on both coasts are uh, are doing their best to move cargo. The supply chain labor force is is uh, been heroic, and despite COVID, despite all the rest, uh, they've moved cargo. And uh, well, that's well, a you story. do. You mentioned uh, the pandemic, and obviously that's been very uh, disruptive. But now that that's hopefully getting better, shouldn't supply chain problems also be going away now? Well, you've had a couple of years to compound the problem. <clears throat> and so it's gonna take some time to, to fix the problem. And, uh, but, but the trends all seem like they're, they're going the right way. And, um, um, but more, mortality in amongst the workforce was actually even a, was a significant issue on the West Coast. And I can't speak to the East Coast in this matter, but uh, you know, I, I lost uh, coworkers to COVID uh, and, uh, there's, they kept going to work when when the problem, when the supply chain problem hit, COVID hit, they still uh, turned to and still went to work. So, um, um, you know, we have a problem on top of um, COVID with a, a not enough people wanting to be in the transportation uh, industry, not enough people wanting to uh, use that as a career. So, workforce uh, recruitment is a, is a is a longer term issue, but. It, it's vital. I'm a boomer. I mean, we're almost gone as far as workers go, but we're not seeing, um, we're not being replaced by these, by the newer generations. And that, that's something that uh, everybody needs to do a better job of recruiting for. So that's, that's why we have no truck drivers. That's why we have fewer uh, dock workers. That's why we have fewer warehouse workers. And also, uh, you know, I think uh, there, one of the solutions, obviously, is to pay people more money and increase wages. And uh, if you want to attract labor, that's normally been the key, money. Well, Max, you were sworn in about a month ago. What are your biggest priorities in the short term and the long term? They're the same. Move cargo. Do what I can to uh, bring my uh, experience in, uh, in history and uh, apply it to the FMC and, where possible, um, 
um, use my knowledge and uh, advice to uh, to keep cargo moving. That's that's the key to the supply chain problem, and uh, we just need to keep moving cargo. And you only move cargo one container at a time, and um, and just times that by a, a million, and you know you got our country's supply issue. So we need to keep moving and keep seeing where we're making progress and not trying to reinvent the wheel because that, that would not be productive. And uh, uh, but we're uh, we're getting there. We're making progress and. It's going to be a while uh, before we see the picture of ships uh, out, outside some of the harbors uh, uh, <clears throat> be reduced, but but they but the numbers are going down, and um, there are new projects and new programs and new um, new initiatives uh, like uh, satellite container yards. They they've show they've shown some uh, success. Uh, Pop up container yards to get the containers out of the out of the harbor area. And um, but uh, the supply chain and uh, in total though needs to um, I think uh, it's been a good a good time for a lot of introspection and self examination and realization that uh, everybody has a role to improve this uh, process. I've seen um, the chassis uh, operators they have uh, done uh, one of the things they did early on in the supply chain crisis was uh, round up all their old beat up chassis and get and fix them and try to get them on the road and use things we already have. We're making new containers, we're making them in this country where they should be and not in China. Uh, and uh, that's a that's a smart move, uh, long-term strategic move. We need to think uh, more long-term and we need to think in total for the whole supply chain and um, do all we can to, uh, uh, to have every element addressed. All and, right, uh, well, Max, thank you so much for being with us and congratulations on your appointment.